Hi guys, um, welcome to episode 37. I don't know, we've done, <laughs> welcome to episode a lot of these so far. And um, this one today is going to be tackling the issue of FIP. And I'll tell you, I don't think we will tackle it one day and I'm quite certain that we will be opening up a can of worms. But um, what we're gonna do is attempt to have a really good discussion around FIP. Um, I'm going to be very honest about some of the things that I discovered even when doing this and how we can better communicate things to you guys. Um, so this is like a little bit of a process and uh, I hope you guys learn a lot from us today, but I will say too that we're learning a lot from you and, um, and we'll see where this takes us. So what I realized from all the DMs that you've had, I've had all the calls over the years, etc is the best thing that we can really do um, as a company and as designers is be very clear on what the intent is of the design, okay? So when you know the intent of the fit, that's when you can really decide whether or not it's right for you, whether or not it's wrong for you. Um, I think what you will discover as we get through this that there is no um, real wrong fit if you like the way that it fits. Um, and there's no real wrong fit if you like the way that it fits and your friend, your spouse, your partner, whatever, doesn't like the way that it fits. Those are uh, friend and uh, marriage issues that, you know, we can get into that deeper discussion. That's a bigger problem. That's a bigger yes. problem and uh, we'll have that with a glass of wine. So what we're going to do today is we are going to cover uh, many of the key bodies that we have on the bottoms, okay? And we are going to show you how some of the pants look when we sized up in them and when we sized down in them. And we'll show you before and afters and we are going to show it on Dion, we are going to show it on Courtney and then voila, you've got it on me. So before I do a change, I'm obviously wearing the Stella and I am wearing a size four. And to be clear, when, um, when we talk about fit, and I'm not pretending like any of you guys can read this scratch right here, but on the website, there's a, a size chart. And what that size chart is, is it is the measurements of the model, the person who wears that size. So for instance, I just took my measurements. I am a 27. I am a 37 and a half on my hips. And I'm, I think a 32 on the chest, somewhere around there. I follow a size four. I'm on the cusp, closer to a six on my hips, but I'm a size four. So what that means is whether or not I am wearing our Stella pant, which I have on right now, or a more regular fitting pant or a fitted pant, that if I have the measurements of a size four, I should look and feel the same as the models do. Same thing, if you are a size 10, you should look and feel the way the models do if your measurements match up with the size 10 on the grid. Now, do not go onto e-com right now and start Googling the grid and everything because we're gonna have a discussion further about that. But uh, I just wanted to lay that out for you that the measurements are around the model. And so if you hit those measurements, then the way that the model looks online, if she's wearing something really tight, it's going to be tight on you. If it's really loose, it should be loose on you. And if you see it and it's really loose, but you want it to be tight, then size way down, okay? So a lot of you guys, um, I wanna answer specifically, we had a woman from who's DMing me saying, I'm sitting at home with two pairs of the Stella pan, and I don't know what size to buy, which one will look best. Okay, so I am wearing the four. And you can see on here, Clearly, uh, I received a video last week of someone putting on the Stella and they were like, look at the pants, they're huge. And then to demonstrate that they were huge, they proceeded to go like this. They're huge. Okay, if you're going to do that, they will look huge. Don't walk around doing that. That's not a good thing to do. So what you wanna do is let the pants sit where they should, okay? So when you look at the model, when you look at the drawings, the pants are designed to hit, in general, one inch below the belly button. But we know also that we love cinching these way up. The Stellas are kind of like 
a sarong. They can be turned into so many different things. And it is what we love about a big pant. And so if I personally were to be wearing a size two, which no doubt I could, and I'm pretty certain I could wear a zero as well. I, if you even just pull me up like this here, I look like I might be doing your taxes. No offense, but like it feels a little more corporate. I feel, I don't feel chill. Um, this is the way that I like it. But now you know how I like it and you can either agree that you like it that way or you can say that you don't like it that way and you can do um, what you need to do to make it right for you. I am a tad under 5'5". Five five. I round up, I'm 5'4 and a half. Okay, and our 5'6", Dion now will yeah. talk to you about it this time. Okay, so this suit that I'm wearing right now is actually the Cassius suiting. This was featured heavily in our spring lookbook. Um, I do not have a size down to show you today because we don't have them in stock quite yet, but you can um, sign up for uh, coming soon on our website. It's like a separate tab that we have on Tibby.com. But I wanted to talk about this because this is the Liam and then this is that split leg pant that we've had in previous seasons that we brought back. So I'm currently wearing a size four and I'm the type of person that sometimes I choose a two versus a four in certain silhouettes. But it really depends. So here you can see like I have a little bit of room here, but they are meant to sit low on the hips. However, if you are the type of person who likes something that sits a little bit higher, you can, you can by all means make these a size smaller if you like, because I have a little bit of a gap here and I genu genuinely have a much smaller waist to hip ratio. So for me, a lot of the time I will go to the two, but I think in this style, like, I think here it feels really chill and I feel like if I were going to take it to it would pull a little bit more. Also the way that they're puddling here, these are the samples so they were meant for someone a little bit taller so um, they're not going to puddle as much but they still will puddle at the ankle. That's kind of the whole point. Um, and also obviously this is our Liam. I want to talk about the weight of the Liam for a second because a lot of people are asking about how lightweight it is given the fact that it's from a spring collection. Well, the Liam is really meant for early spring, but it's also seasonless. Like you could be wearing this right now with a cashmere sweater, you can be wearing it with your heavier pieces, then you can throw this on top of one of your beautiful silk or poplin dresses well into May. But I think of this as a year-round blazer. I'm gonna wear this in May, I'm gonna wear it in September, I'm gonna just keep wearing it whenever the weather permits. Um, again, for those of you who haven't seen the new blazer style in Liam, it actually buttons over really great chic suit and I also um, for some of you that are always talking about the sleeve length I have a little hack here you see where these buttons are you have four of them I unbutton these two I fold it and I button it back that way I have a little bit but also the and it gives a really pretty angle as well but our design team actually wrote us talking about the sleeve length on this because the intention was that you can roll this up because look there's no contrast line in here so you can roll this up as high as you want if you feel more comfortable It's so funny that. that contrast lining is so like mid-2000. It like, really is. The J. Crew like. Yeah. Put a striped lining yeah. underneath. Yes. <laughs> Personally, I'm not gonna go this short. I like to have a little bit longer of a sleeve, but I do understand yeah. for some of you for functionality purposes, if you're working or if you're at a desk, it makes more sense to have it cut, but you do have that option. So the button back trick can always work on all of your favorite blazers. Also, I wanna talk about the Giselle. So this is a new silhouette. This is Giselle. I've worn this layered before on previous seasons, but we have not shown you the actual production version of this. So I wanted to show you how snug this fits in the back for some of you who've had questions. It comes up. I and you should definitely line. be in an extra small in this. So do you in you're wearing top? a size small? Yeah, I'm wearing a small. Because you're 32 on the chest. Yeah, I'm 32C. Um, and then, but yeah, look how snug and nice this fits, but I could go a little bit tighter, but personally I like to layer, so I probably will stick with the small. And those mm -hmm. are things that you want to think about when you are selecting. Um, also, this has a little bit longer of a flap, so if you are wearing something a little bit lower like I am now, you feel a little bit more covered. Yeah. And you're wearing a size four in the pants. Right? I'm wearing a size four in the and you pants. You absolutely could wear it too. I could wear yeah. it too, but I think for chill purposes, I like it here mm -hmm. um, because I, I mean, it is intended to hit just above the hip bone, just uh -huh. to graze. 
So if I did wear them up higher and this came in, I would still I still would like them, but I think if I'm going to be wearing a slim pan, I want it to have that slouch. And that's what we're trying to get you yeah. to understand is that difference. So I'm going to try on the tropical curve pant and I'll have Courtney come out. Amazing. Okay. So Courtney, come on out. You guys remember Courtney, our like super PR person. And um, so what size are you wearing? So I'm wearing a 12 in the Art Tropical Wool Sculpted Pant from Spring. Okay. So you know what I'm going to do is, um, Courtney, you ended up deciding that you wanted a size 10, yes. piece, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think Courtney looks lovely in them, but can I see the 10 on you? Because sure. you definitely felt better in them, yeah. and I did love the picture of you in them, so that yeah. looks really great too. Okay, um, I want to show you something I'm wearing just in terms of uh, new proportions. So we do have... Uh, this season some cropped blazers, which I really, really love because it's cropped, but it's definitely not fitted. And it is meant to look like someone just chopped it off. You've got the little um, pockets hanging down there. And I think that makes it look really, really super interesting and it gives a nice proportion. And then I'm wearing it with the pants down low. What is um, absolutely doable with this is you could also hike this up and make more of a you know high-waisted short jacket proportion I like that it's really really nice um, this to me feels a little more um, modern and different and those are some of the weird nuances of fashion like it's not like that the high-waisted with the jacket thing is dead by any stretch but there's subtle things that feel a little bit newer in your closet and this interesting proportion where the jacket doesn't necessarily have to hit the top of your pants is something that feels new. Just trust me, try it on in your closet and you're gonna feel like you have a little bit of a new wardrobe just by that little tiny, tiny difference there. And then I'll show you, I am wearing this with the um, size, I think it's a size small. It's either a small or a four, but this is the chalky drape um, little curved top. And this is one that um, I wore it last week on Insta and everyone just started writing about it, but I just want to show you. So this is a really great top because it's one of those PDWs for us. It clearly can go from play to dinner to work because it's got this 12 mower fabrication. So these are like one of the best. You know, if you're wearing jeans and sneakers, no one's gonna be hating on you for feeling like you went all dressed up when everyone said that was not the plan. And then clearly with like a beautiful skirt, jewelry, this goes like black top. Um, okay, so let me, I'm gonna bring Courtney back out here because she's moved into the size 10. So Courtney, where does the size, I do love this one. Yeah. And I think looking at you, I would say that no matter what, the 12 would, the, the 12 is too large for yeah, you. Yeah, it just felt, it felt a little, Yeah, I just felt the 10 personally felt, felt more comfortable. It, uh, it, it definitely, like, I love the way this is fitting on you because what happens in this kind of regular fitting pant, what to look out for, guys, is you are really nice here. And can you turn to the side? Sure. Your pocket's not splitting open, yeah. okay? at all so that like you're you're fitted right through there nice and comfortable and fi by fitted i mean you don't feel like your pants going to drop off right <laughs> right um and then you've got the volume in here and this is where i do get a lot of dms guys from people who are like excuse me hello i can fit my legs in here but this is too tight and i'm like well that's not the intent right this is to uh, give you some volume there and then be more fitted here. Um, so, you know, again, to each his own, but um, I'm letting you know designer intent. Also, what is interesting about this pant is there are some pants that, um, like if you wanted a super slouchy pant, you could not just size up to a 14 and get a super slouchy pant. And the reason why is look at a pair of pants and if you have like a curved pant, there's a curve built into the pant. So what that means is that if you go up two sizes, the curve is gonna hit you in the wrong place and it's not going to look slouchy. You're going to feel just really off. 
So um, a lot of you guys have asked me about like blazers. Can I just size up twice and get a slouchy blazer? And the answer is like sometimes yes and sometimes no. If you're wearing a blazer that has princess seams and everything in it, when you size up, you really just look like a little person playing dress up in someone's clothing that, you know, like when you try on vintage and it really just doesn't fit. So um, it's, you don't, you're not getting the slouch in it. So if you've got all the seams and uh, very specific design details around the fit of a garment, it's not so easy to just size up and down. Where clearly the Stella's, I mean, I, I'm sure I could put on an eight and belt it and I'd be good to go. The other thing too that I love about this pant and when Dion and I were trying it on, and I, you have it too on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, why don't you show the roll up? I'll let you guys stand next to each other right. since that's a good story. So Court has hers rolled. I actually have mine just relaxed. But the great thing about this is if it's you don't need a tailor if you really want to wear yeah. these pants because even if you roll them, the curve does not go anywhere, which is really nice. Yeah, it looks really good. And this is also a nice trick for, you know, if you have an interesting shoe you want to show off. And just for comfort too, just to have an alternate look. So I'm wearing the exact same pants. These are in the smaller size. This is a two. Someone had a question earlier about my height. I am five six, and um, and some change, but I'm pretty much five six. So these are hitting me to where I probably wouldn't cuff these. But when I try on the four for you guys, you'll see that I probably will feel like I need to cuff just to kind of round it out a little bit. But just to show you where they're hitting on me in the two. Yeah, so it is a good solid inch and a half below the belly button. Yes. Yeah. And can I ask you, yeah. you don't have to reveal everything, yeah. but are, where, <laughs> Am I, where's like, your belly button? Are you hitting right at the belly button? Yeah, right below. Right, so that's like, again, choice. Yeah. Right, so you know kind of we set this out to be a little bit of more of a low rise pant. Right. But I would also say you're a little shorter waisted yeah. there, and mm -hmm. so it's really working on you. And um, yeah. yeah, these look so good. I love this. Yeah. I'm five three as well, so I prefer things a little bit. Like when we were trying stuff on yesterday, Dion cuffed them right away, and I felt completely. I was like, okay, this is. Yeah, sometimes when you do that emergency cuff, yeah. it like takes away the anxiety, right. and then <laughs> sure. then you learn to like keep growing it out yeah. from there. Definitely. Also, I just want to mention that she's wearing the fundamentals blazer with the cutout elbow sleeves. So, if you see a tropical wool from her previous season, you can absolutely mix those tropical wools. Yes. I think it's great, especially if you aren't you aren't ready for the Stella or you have the Stella in another color. If you want to build the suit, you can just do it here. Yeah. And also, add a vest. It's the vest is great. So, and I'm just gonna do a little close up of the vest because I love it. Um, the size four. Someone had asked me about this vest the other day. Um, yeah, this is a size four. I have it cinched just a, just a hair, not too much. But yeah. Okay. What color, black or navy? Um, we have this in black. We also have it in the Casha suiting, which is the brown suit that I wore earlier, which also comes in a nice kind of dustier light blue as well. That's uncoming soon if you want to take a look at those. Um, so it's on tibby.com if you go to apparel and then just go to coming soon. Okay, cool. All right, so, um, you know, you guys are definitely getting the sense of like you didn't tune in and I wasn't like, here are the three answers to all of your fit questions, right? Because it is, um, it is complicated and it's layered. And, you know, if you want to compare this to food, like good things in life are complicated. It's not so simple, right? The gap is pretty simple. But if you really do want to wear good things, it's complicated. Um, like a Thai beef salad, I love that. It's complicated food, it's delicious. A bologna sandwich is not complicated and it's not that delicious. Um, so, you know, sometimes we work a little hard for some of the things that we love. But when you figure out your fit, um, and what I wanna say the step before figuring out your fit is figuring out who you are and what you love. And I have seen it so many times where a woman or a man or whoever walks out of the dressing room and they feel so good in what they're wearing. And then they look over at their friend who like gives them like the stink eye and is like, no, no. 
and I don't understand that. But let's go back to the Thai beef salad. I would never eat a delicious Thai beef salad and then look at my friend and say, did I enjoy that or not? Why would I ask him that opinion? Like, I know if I enjoyed it. So when you, when you know what you want, which is a big step because not everyone even really understands yet what they like, but when you know what you like, do not go ask random friends. Make sure that you are asking people whose opinion in that exact thing really, really matters. Because, like, I wouldn't ask Courtney how to make a Thai beef salad. I really don't think she would know, but, you know, Jasmine, back in the summer, she's <laughs> going to make me an amazing Thai beef salad like she has before. So, um, yes. Okay, so okay. you've got on yes. this is the amazing oh, nylon metallic joggers. Yes. Um, Rain did just tell me my blazer, I wear um, an eight in my blazer, so, and I'm wearing a large t shirt only because I wanted it to be a little flowy. I did like the medium as well, though. Um, so these are part of Tian's spring or fundamentals? They're technically spring. Spring. Yeah. Um, so these will be launching on Tibby.com very shortly. Yes. Um, and then our new spring sandal as well. This is great, yeah. Yeah. And I took a medium actually in the jogger, mm -hmm. um, which felt feels comfortable. Can you lift it up a little bit higher? The waist. See. Uh -huh. Yep. Let's see how it's. Yeah. It's yeah. You can wear both ways either yeah. for sure. And then, how did you feel when it was unzipped? Did you the? I actually tried the black ones on that I'm gonna, uh -huh. but I didn't do. I okay. I do like it. It kind of gives it like a little more a casual feel to myself. Uh -huh. just, I don't know. They're just like a little bit. Changes it up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. I, I genuinely prefer having it unzipped when I have a closed in shoe for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it gives me what I need. Well, and also, the, the real key with the one being unzipped is the uh, paper bag jogger. Definitely. Because that one, well, I mean, the key is the paper bag jogger if you are shorter like I am, and that paper bag jogger is our one style that it has a bit of a longer length to it. So. Um, that's the one that looks great. That looks, I love these roll up. Yeah, so these are the size four. So this is the size up from what I was wearing initially. This is the size four. So if you look at how they're hitting, I could absolutely wear the four and feel comfortable. It's just a little bit more give in the leg, but you notice the curve is still there. I'm also wearing the cotton viscose halter top. It's from Fundamentals. It's a really nice suiting underpinning that's just very eased out, comfortable, and, um, you know, just, I feel like it's something that I can wear with my joggers or a nice suit and I feel very played in our work. I can basically wear anything with this style. And then I'm wearing the size four in the fundamental blazer with the cut out elbow sleeve here. Just like that. Okay, because clothes are meant to be played with, I'm gonna give you guys a really fun hat. So Rain, do you mind popping in here for one second? I just want to show you, Rain's wearing the Stella from Fundamentals. Hi. And you've got the buckles going on yep. at the bottom there. You're wearing what size? Double zero. Double zero, and you're how tall? Five feet. Five feet. Okay, so I want to show you, I'm going to show you a hack with the um, ties taken off. So what I've done is I'm not wearing the tie. So what's really cool is, little hack here. So take it through like you're, if you were doing a little belt, I hope I don't butcher this, but I just did it a minute ago and it worked, okay. So I'm gonna make it like nice and secure. Then I'm going to just run it through my first two belt loops here. And then I'm going to do the second one. So now, if I'm traveling, mm -hmm. cool, right? And you know what else that's good for? Because I'm a double zero in these pants, but they are still pretty loose when I take the ties off. Yeah. Because I'm so short, I don't want them to drag. So that would allow me to pull them up. That little so bit. That little bit so that they don't like drag on the floor when they're yeah. not tied. And what's interesting too with this pant is when something, um, so my waist is 27, remember? But I think the waist on these pants is like 32 because it is meant to sit much lower on my body. So that's when you, you know, if you see this pant and you're like, well, I'm a 32 waist, mm -hmm. so now I'm going to wear, that's not where we meant to have the waist yeah. hit. But again, like if you want to do it, do whatever. Okay. But what's good is if you want to cinch your pant up, what you'll find sometimes is when the waistband is really wide, sometimes it's hard to get um, 
a full-on paper bag moment unless it's really hot. Right. And when you do it lower and you bring the belt around, sometimes it gunches up exactly. and it gives you that weird thing in the that weird butt yeah. thing. So this little trick here allows you to have something interesting going on without giving you what we have scientifically termed the weird butt thing. <laughs> Because that describes it. It's yeah. a weird butt thing. It's a weird butt thing. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you. And so more Stella's coming up more here. More Stella. I just wanted to show you how this hits. This is the Nova Plaid Stella pant. This one is, I think this is on the website now, actually. This is at New Arrivals. It's a really nice, uh, it's almost like a tropical wool weight. It's nice and light. And I just wanted to show how you can mix a little bit of these suiting textures. Because the cashews is a lot heavier. And then I have my nice cotton viscous tee, and then I've got these. This is like a great transitional spring look. But also, if you see where this is hitting, I'm wearing the size four in this pant. I could absolutely wear the two if I wanted to. Um, and then I could even do that trick, maybe even with like a little ribbon if I wanted to paperback. Mm -hmm. But um, that's what I normally do if my size is a little bit higher. But if I'm doing like the classic two, I don't even really need to cinch. But the where, where it's hitting here, I also like, and I feel like most of our models online are sitting here, because yeah. that's really intended fit. But if you do have a smaller waist, you could size up for sure. But that, you know, when you um, start to really take a look at some of the, um, the visuals that we have online, you know, really do pay attention, like, where is this hitting on Maggie? So Maggie's a good example, because she's wearing a four, but she is 5'10". But what you want to pay attention to here is she is sitting about an inch underneath the belly button okay so that's where the intended hit is and you can see here maggie fills this out a little bit and then of course it's loose there so and then here's barbara and she's wearing the size four in the curved pant but she's about five ten so you know you can see where it's hitting her but you can definitely get the intent from the way that the models look and you know how it should look on you because you know where you fit on the size chart. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things, and we'll keep talking about these as they come out, for spring, uh, you know, we made a commitment that we were going to create clothing meant to be worn uh, 12 months out of the year, or at least in and out throughout the year. And that we were also going to commit to not giving you a super winter coat in you know, July, and not giving you a little flimsy sundress in January, and then actually trying to convince you to wear it then. So what we have done for spring, and, and just the way that it is going forward, is we are just giving you clothing that we love. And that some of this stuff for the weights, depending on where you live, Maybe it's a Jan Feb March jacket. Maybe it's a pick it back up in September jacket. So we'll try and be as clear as possible on the fabrications, uh, the weights, and also even how much stiffness there is in the fabric because um, stiffness is not a bad word unless it like chafes you. But you do want, um, you want stiffness to be able to give you shape because shape in the clothing is often what really creates a modern look you guys write and ask about what is modernity a lot and um, modernity might be in the fabrication um, and it's also very much in the shape that it creates and it's the color the shine all those different things but when you get shape created um, that is definitely part of being modern and we love it too when shape can be created just through interesting little tucks here so, and you're wearing one of the heaviest sweaters. For exactly, sure. I'm wearing the Fundamentals cashmere sweater and I wanted to show how to wear with a lightweight pant. Also, I could wear a closed-in shoe as well. And then, you know, these colors look really nice together. And also, if you want to see a little bit more of the pant, you can always do a little half tuck here. Yeah, so that's how you can really make these transitional because like I said before, this weight is very similar to tropical wool, so it is very seasonless. You can even use this, as I showed you in the uh, show about color, you can use this against really nice bright colors and nice palette cleanser in between seasons as well. Yeah, because we've really been railing against the notion of buying a spring wardrobe. You know, you guys, like, it really is just about buying those few pieces within a season that you love, and you're not buying it with a mindset of who you are between March and June. You are buying it with a much 
longer lens here. These are things to collect over time. This the sweater is something we've collected over time. And Courtney, you've got on what yes. are a few cashmere set. And Courtney, what size are you wearing? Um, in this, I'm actually in the small medium. Okay. Um, and then our new Morris Lovers from Spring, which yeah. we're coming through. So I think, um, you know, if, if I took, so this is where it gets complicated, right? And I'm really, really still working on a way to explain this in, in very um, layman's terms. But what gets complicated is if I were to measure your chest right now, yeah. we'd all be like, it's a, it's a larger yeah. chest, right? I mean, we can say that. Yes. <laughs> you guys, we have to be honest. <laughs> I mean, we have to be honest here, you know, like, keep it real. So she's got a larger chest than I do, for sure. Um, but for you, because of your height, yeah. um, like, I could see that you are much more comfortable in a small medium than you would be yes. in the medium large. Yeah, yeah. I think I just... Um, like, I love how oversized things look on certain people. I'm just not one who, I just feel more comfortable in a size. I think just knowing, yeah, I should not that, but knowing. <laughs> no, but I think, that, I think that there's a big distinction between, uh, a lot of you guys write and they're like, you know, I want to be a creative pragmatist, but I don't like things really super oversized. Yeah. This is not about like supersize me. This is about uh, one of the core tenets of being a creative pragmatist is that there's a certain effortlessness to the way that we dress. So it's not about, you know, going like full on Olsen twin, right, like right, yeah. buried. It's about like really creating a feeling that you, when you're wearing it, you don't feel stuffy, you don't yeah. feel too lady, you don't feel uptight. Yeah. You're you that. feel good, yeah. And what size are you wearing in the skirt? The same, small, medium. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so guys, like again, um, as we get to know each other and everything, um, you'll realize that this works really, really well on you, and I am still trying to figure out a way to really convey that so yep. that, you know, because my 5'11 sister, she has a chest, but she definitely needs a large because she's 5'11. Yes, yeah. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. I also want to show you guys some really fun ways to brighten things up. So um, I'm, let's just, in terms of like keeping it real here, let's look at, I don't know what my chest is, so let me see. So my chest is oh my god, my chest is 31. What the? Oh, I'm so flat. All right, so I have a 31 chest, but what happened is my rib cage is a little bit larger, and these are like interesting things to get to know about yourself. But you know, when you have two kids, they like sat in your rib cage and they push everything out. So what that means is, even though I have a 31 chest for me, because my rib cage is on the larger size side, I'm wearing a size small in this. Wait, size, size four. Okay. So I'm wearing a size four in this. So this is the bustier. But remember, Dion with her fuller cup and a 32 can also wear the size small because the key is is the key measurement point here on this is under the rib cage, and I am really filling that out. And I could stuff a bunch of stuff in here, which I'm not going to, but I could if I wanted to. So, you know, I've got room in here, but the top is staying up on me because um, because it's nice, it's nice and fitted um, under the rib cage. And then I'm just gonna show you here how this whole thing works together. So I'm really um, in love with this. These yeah. pops are coming, and you have that pop a color yeah. happening right there too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, oh, again. just to kind of drive this point home about wearing these winter weights back to our nicer summer and transitional weights. This is that cashmere tie skirt that Courtney was wearing in navy. I'm wearing it here in a size small. I'm wearing my gnome tee in a small, and my Liam blazer in a small. So, someone had a question actually about what I should defer to as far as measurements are concerned on the size chart um, and deciding whether to go up or down. Um, there are certain silhouettes that I wanna kind of clear up that you're pretty much gonna stay the same in. For example, like I have never wanted to size down in the Liam. I'm wearing a size small in the Liam. It fits for me. I wanna be able to wear things layered underneath. I also wanna wear things slim and be able to button this over comfortably 
and have a nice, um, have it kind of drape over my hips in a really smart way. Ignore that I have something in my pocket. But, um, you know, that's what you're looking for when you're deferring to that. But you should always look at the size chart and look at your measurements. Because I think for pants, the most important thing is thinking about your hip measurements. I always go off my hip measurements first rather than my waist because my hips are always gonna be the thing that's going to be trending larger. That way you can take it from there and then get things nipped in or altered as well. I think alterations are so important, especially if you do have, um, if you are, if you do have proportions that are outside of the, you know, what the size chart is giving you. Because by all means, no one is gonna be an exact science on the size chart. So I think it's really important to drive that point home. Like, it's not an exact science and it's not cookie cutter because we aren't, we're all very different. Some people, like, you might fit a size four, but you've got a short waist, so you wanna have the two to bring it up a little bit higher. You could have a long waist and you wanna have a six, so you have that nice drape. It really depends on all of those things, but I think the first step is to measure yourself. If you're not measuring yourself, there's, you're just guessing, you know, based on a size that someone maybe told you in a store. I think it's so important that you know your measurements of bust, waist, and hips, and then also even end seam is so important. And this is something that you can look up online and just really get to know your body super well when it comes to fit, especially now. We're not going into stores nearly as much as we used to. Um, I try to go in and try on as much as I can, especially for pants, so I think it's so important that you do know your measurements, because they also do change. My measurements during the pandemic are very different from my measurements pre-pandemic. So just measure yourself as well, because that's really gonna help you figure that out. Also, a lot of the time you think maybe your your waist is short because you've always heard that or you built that up in your mind, and you might find out that you're actually balanced. And I think that that's why measuring yourself is so important, because everyone has their own view of what their own body looks like, but it's also, you know. It keeps it real. Yes, measuring does not lie, and that's what you should always defer to. Yeah, keeps it real. Okay, so Courtney, damn, I love this. Thank you. Okay, so these are the paper bags. These are the paper bags. Yeah. This is actually um, a size large. We didn't have a medium yeah. in the store yesterday. I would probably, I could wear either or again, like I did the tropical wool. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. I do love the lar the large yeah. Argument, yeah. Because I think like it looks really good, and I love you guys. This is the. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you. If, she, if you don't zip it, yes, if yeah. you don't unzip it, I'm gonna show you how uncomfortable you can feel in this. You know, when you're shorter, yeah. you feel like everything just like collapses down. Yeah. And it's this, you know, when we talk about like big slim skin, guys, this is actually that little bit of skin there that, um, I don't know, it's just nice and long and lean to the eye. And this is not about making it look thin or anything like that. It just kind of um, opens up and lets your the pan breathe, yeah. and because you're quite covered mm -hmm. everywhere else, um, but yeah. that was the first thing I was concerned about when I tried these on yesterday. And then silver just you know unzipped me. And yeah. It's a total, it's a game changer. It really is, and I think that too. You know, when we talk about um, this, isn't about to do with fits, but like basics that aren't basics. I mean, every, you're wearing a track pant, yeah. you're wearing a sandal, and you're wearing that little cashmere sweater, mm -hmm. and it's so chic and stylish. You know, yeah. it's not at all average, so I love that. Thanks. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> okay, um, all right, so I want to show you one of our wool sweaters and our leather pant. So I am wearing the um, leather pant that has the uh, cuffs at the bottom, and I do like these cupped up. I just had to uncouple them to, to uh, put my sneakers on. Trainers, sneakers. And I can't remember how to pronounce these. I bought them in Chengdu, China. I love them. Uh, anyway, so here I am. All right, so this pan is based off of, we started this body last spring or a year ago in the rubberized denim. And then we did it in regular denim. So this pant, uh, has the curve and the volume in the leg, but you can see that this measurement here is really important for you when you are uh, looking to buy this pant. You want to really make sure that when a pant is sitting on the waist, 
that's where that can really make or break it because if you have a larger waste than what the measurements are for that measurement grid, then you know when something doesn't have elastic waste, you're not going to have give there. So looking at that waste measurement is really, really, really important. So now we're wearing the same same shape. Same shape. Here. Yeah. So I was really no, like you're wearing the. Yours is lower though. Oh yeah, mine does sit lower. All right, okay. so see guys, even this, okay, so if Dion is looking to buy this pant, her pant is sitting lower on the waist, right? You've got a yeah. good inch and a half there. So one of the things I remember when, um, one of the things that really screwed up fits for people for so long was when really low rise came in. Yes. Because people were like, I can wear that size four pant even though my waist is, you know, 30 inches or whatever. And, uh, but if they had skinnier legs, then yes, they could wear that pant. So, you know, you really got to look at your measurement point to the key point where a pant is hitting. So here, you could be much heavier if you were much thicker through the waist, but if you had more narrow hips, you could actually wear this pant in a smaller size. Definitely, definitely. And I'll actually now, have you two next to each other. Now, with this one, I'm wearing a size four. This is that railroad denim, which is also the same shape as the organic cotton twill, or is it a little bit lower? It's um, it's a little bit lower because I'm wearing more of the organic. Because the twill. denim is, I'm sorry, the leather is actually quite close to the organic cotton twill. It's a higher rise versus this. Because and this is a, the um, the same as a rubberized denim. Yes. So if you've ever had rubberized tie dye, that patent pant that was curved last spring, or the leather pants that Amy has on right now, the organic cotton twill is going to fit like this. I'm going to put them on in a second, but I just wanted to show the difference because someone was asking about all of those like they were the same fit. This is definitely a little bit lower. If you look how short the rise is compared to the one that Amy was just wearing, I'm going to take these off and put on another one to show the difference. And what size are you wearing in the t-shirt? This is I'm wearing an extra small in the tee because in previous lives I've been wearing the small and you've probably seen me tugging a little bit. That's because it was a little too big for me because this fits comfortably on the shoulder. The V feels very secure and I want to talk about the fact that the V is high. It's never going to, it's not supposed to sit low. So look at that, like very comfortable. Okay, but by the way, for the record, you have like 15 and a half inch shoulders. Yeah. So a size four on average has like an 18 inch shoulders and um, oh. don't quote me on that even though now it's been recorded but, yes <laughs> um but you have very small shoulders mm -hmm. so you've kind of trained yourself right that you're a size four or a size yeah because i always take a size four in a blazer despite the fact that my shoulders are 15 inches exactly across. but your shoulders like putting on a small that is designed to fit a four or a six is problematic when your shoulders exactly are that much smaller and the pants I'm wearing for, so I personally like to wear my pants a little bit higher than these, but you know, like if I did want to wear the two, it would sit a little bit like here, which is also great too. So that's where you're going to want to see the difference. Courtney also has them on too. Yes. And, and with regards to that, Dion, one of the things like that's come out of this is um, I think it's really important it's not so much important to show these the measurements for every single point on a given pair of pants. Yes. We found through practice that that can actually be confusing. Exactly. But what I do want to show is where things are supposed to be hit and how much bigger or smaller it will be if you go up or down. So you yeah. were saying that you wanted those to fit a little bit higher on the waist and a size two should be one inch smaller yeah. around the waist and an inch smaller around the hip. Exactly. And so when you put that on, it's gonna hike up everything yes. naturally and uh, and you should love the way that it's done. Mm -hmm. okay. And I am on the railroad denim like Dion had and I took a 10 this. You're wearing a size 10? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're a size 10 on the bottom. It's like we yeah. keep coming out and you're like, and shockingly I'm a 10 and it's like actually, yeah, it's actually yeah. looks like a horse who <laughs> walks like a horse. <laughs> you are of course. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're a size 10. And comfortable and again, I like you know things that hit being equal, so it's just a great, great and, step. And so I'll say through this practice today it really made me um, and I was taking your measurements. Yeah. I saw that um, when I measured your waist, it didn't really jive with the chart that we have online for um, for what the waist would be for the sizes that you're yeah. taking. So um, I'm, I'm going to go back and think about that. We need to make that better. Um, I know we can do a better job of figuring out how to best convey that. So 
a lot of good has come of this. Like I said, I've discovered things that we can be doing uh, much, much better. So, cool. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, so I'm wearing the crochet sweater here. I'm wearing the um, the sample that we did. Hannah, she got a little aggressive here, making this pretty low so you can see my whole bra and there was definitely some nipple action when we did the photo shoot in this. So the production on this actually comes up a little bit. It's on the line, we have it correct there, but um, it'll come up a little bit. You won't see every single thing. So one other fun hack here is, you know, if you're wearing the sweater, uh, if I were wearing a black heel with it or something, I'm really comfortable with the way everything's fitting. But somehow when I was wearing a sneaker, I wanted this to feel, um, I wanted a little more pant exposed. So here's another hack, right? So get your little hoop earring. You can buy a cheap one anywhere. Don't buy it at our friends that start with an A, but buy a cheap one somewhere. So here you go. I take the little hoop and I'm just gonna run it through the bottom and put it in my little belt loop here. And this is kind of like a new version of a half tuck without it being, I mean, half tuck is so dated too. Like, yeah. I don't know. It I just, call it a French tuck. French tuck? Yeah. Okay, new name. So new name. French tuck. Um, and this is our little piercing. So, okay guys. Um, all right. Oh, okay. So I have on the, uh, the cotton tool pant. I don't know what size I'm wearing. Oh, can you check? I have a feeling. You're a two. I'm wearing a two. Wonderful. So you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So your belly button is right there. Right You're here. Right at the belly button. So in the two, the two yeah. makes sense. I'm wearing that same cotton viscose halter again. So just so you guys can see the difference. Also, the cotton, this organic cotton twill is amazing. It's a certified organic cotton, hence the name, but it's also something that can really be worn now. That cream cashmere sweater that I threw on earlier, I can definitely wear here, but this is like such a nice, easy PW outfit. Like if I'm wearing this, I can pretty much go anywhere. Grocery store, I can uh, throw on an earring and a different shoe, do drinks. It's forever. It's, it's literally an everywhere pant. That's why I like the cotton twill. It's just really comfortable, eased out, and it's, I would not feel like a jerk wearing it in my house. Like, this is a good fabric. Yeah, for, for us, that, that intersection of, you know, um, when we talk about CMC, Chill Modern Classic, remember, it's not like Chill Modern Classic. Yeah. An item can be all of those things at once. So that pant, to be that chilled out, that yeah. effortless, but also very refined and have a modern shape to it at the same time is like the holy grail. Yeah. I say. It's it's a perfect PDW pant. Oh, someone's asking what size on the top. This is a size small. Yeah. Yes. Would you go to an extra small? Would I go to an extra small? No, I don't think so. No, I mean, you've got a nice give, but it's ribbed, so yeah. it does stay on the body. I mean, you could do an extra small, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary, but you know, and also like if I want to have a little bit longer of a length, that would definitely do that. Yeah. I'm going to try on the cotton wool skirt. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when I said earlier that, you know, pick your, I'm not saying to pick your friends based on who gives you fashion, good fashion advice. It's not about that. It's more about um, picking who you consult with. And so, you know, what I tell people all the time here is, I'm, I'm lucky, right? It's Tracy, Dion, Hannah, the crew that I have to bounce things off of. But I never come out of my office or walk into the office feeling great about something and then ask Tracy's opinion if I'm as fabulous as I think I am, unless it's something that we're trying new for a line. But what I do use them for is when something feels off. When I walk out and I'm like, you know, Tracy, like something just feels a little off about this. And then she'll, you know, say, well, maybe if we did this or that, or if you wore it with this, it'll make you feel better. So the people that you trust, that you've kind of chosen as your fashion mentors, they are there to bounce ideas off of and have a discussion with you on how to make things better. But they're not there to confirm for you whether or not you are indeed chic if you do feel chic. So, okay, this is a little, here, come out. Yeah. So I want to make sure, um, so, let's, this is a little high. 
No, you didn't. I don't, I don't it wasn't zipped, zipped up. It and was I was like, zipped. fucking A, man. Did we like mess it up? It wasn't zipped. Listen, I've got like a two person operation back there, okay? <laughs> okay. So you guys asked, um, what is a bit of this? How does it look? Um, obviously oh. amazing. This is a great skirt. Yeah, yeah, so. It's pretty great. Answer. So it's the same fabric as the pants. So it's really, really chill, but substantial. Yeah. It gives you the same feeling as a silk file, but it's even more special. I think of this as definitely being a have to have that could turn into an in and out. Yeah. It's got that beautiful cutout detail. I love showing it with a little bit of a contrast. And also this belt comes with the skirt. You're welcome. Got another belt going on too. So let me just see something. I just want to see like how much you could the lower, yeah. choose to size up or down, right? So it might be interesting later. Yeah. Oh, like you can, first of all, first of all, you could wear this lower, right? I feel cooler and more daytime lower. What, yeah, yeah. I always I just want to like, go for my waist. Was like the chill, the chill yeah. one, right? Okay, so but I do think that like. Um, if you were even two sizes larger, you could have come up here, mm -hmm. and it it would have fit you through here. Yeah. But but you might have looked all prissy sissy like. Yeah, I don't you know, want to look. Yeah. You don't want to look pris. So when you're in a dressing room, when you're trying on something that you've ordered off of e-commerce or whatever, just because you could have sized down. It doesn't mean that you should. We can all do tons of things, but it doesn't mean that we should do them. So, you know, really understanding where do you want this to fit? What makes you feel the most comfortable? Um, really, you know, push yourself and and do remember that, um, you know, I really, I, I believe so firmly that there's no such thing as bad taste and there's no such thing as bad style. I think there is such a thing as no style and no taste um, and to me that is sad because it means that someone's kind of maybe either lacking creativity or they haven't really discovered who they are yet but as far as bad taste or bad fashion bad style there's the reason why I say there's no such thing is because who gets to say what it is and exactly it's so yeah. subjective you know well we talk about like project runway yeah, like, you know, they have very strong opinions and very loud opinions about what um, what is in or out, but it is very subjective and also depends on timing. You know, yeah. something that makes sense for the time period all of a sudden doesn't. Like, we saw this with a lot of designs during the pandemic, you know? Yeah. Things that made sense six months before all of a sudden didn't make sense. You so, know? really find your fashion peeps because, you know, in using Project Runway, let's just throw them right under the bus today, is, you know, they occupied a space on network television, yeah. right? So you would assume, like, well, damn, they're getting a full hour on this network, they're talking to the masses, so this has got to be right, right? And the thing is, it isn't, and it is geared towards entertainment and talking to a large group of people. So um, you can never have an opinion that will satisfy everyone at all. When someone does think they have an opinion that satisfies everyone, run from that person because they are dead, dead wrong. Yeah. So find your peeps, find the people that um, kind of share your mindset and how you want to um, feel about yourself and and ask us for opinions. Because you do, and we appreciate that. Right? Yeah, and you can't be everything to everyone, and that even goes with your personal style as well. The second you start dressing for other people, that's when it gets hairy, you know? Because I feel like a lot of the time, if you like something and you have the opinion of five other people and you know you value their opinion, it doesn't really matter. Like, yes, sure, I want my friends to be like, oh yeah, that's a cute outfit, but it's also like, if I don't feel good in it, what's the point? Well, it's funny because I, um, I was DMing with Rachel Amandi and she was telling me that she's I hope you don't mind, Rachel, if you're watching this, I'm going to talk about our conversation. But she was telling me that she's dating a guy who's not really understanding the big look. And Rachel loves, like, yeah. the whole, like, amazing big look. And, um, and so we started talking, and she was like, you know, with a guy, like, at what point do I get to come in and start tweaking his wardrobe? And it made me think, you know, we always say, like, don't, don't cater to your partner. But then I was thinking how, like, my husband during the pandemic here, like, he 
He has a pair of sweatpants he's been wearing that I'm certain we would not have children if he had been wearing those, like, in the beginning. Like, yeah. Well, they're when you get comfortable, you, that's when you're like, okay, yeah, so, like, I've done this for a while, right. and now I'm going to, like, start bringing back all the weird things. Well, Stuff I know comes later. Tracy's, Tracy's actually hidden things from her husband. Mm -hmm. I have a pair of pants I've hidden from Frank. But, like, what, does he have, has he hidden shit of mine? I don't know, but I remember I dated a guy in college, and he was wearing, like, flip-flops, and, like, society's moved past sandals on men. Um, so, like, I, yeah. They went missing, yeah. meaning dumpster. Yeah. But um, yeah, like it happens. It's fine. I saved him from himself, and like you know. So I'm gonna amend yeah. something. If you are a creative pragmatist and you're dating someone, then you're always right. And yeah, and also like I personally I'm date people who ask me to help edit their outfits right. respectfully. You know, but well, and I think we do know. I mean, listen. In all seriousness, I always tell my husband. You know, when he. There have been things when I've come out and he's like, mm, not loving. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? I know that you love how confident this makes me feel and look as a result. And if I go put on what you think you want me to put on right now, I'm not gonna feel confident. And then that is way worse. So I was, I was saying there's a, a TikTok that I was looking at and it was called, um, is it oversized or is she just skinny? And I, I really thought that more the way to think about it is not is, is it oversized or is it skinny, but is it oversized or is she just confident or is he just confident? Um, you know, when someone is confident in something, they can carry, they can literally carry the world. Wait, Dion ran away, so I think she's trying to get one more look in before we um, shut down. So I'm, what I'm going to do for sure, though, as a result of this, is I want to go back and tweak the, the measurements that we have on the website for the different sizes. And, um, and I'm going to come up with like lots of good drawings and ways to tell this story better for you guys. And um, another thing I'm thinking that might be important to show you is like what the other pants are similar to something. So like if you bought this pant uh, last spring in the rubberized denim, you know that it will fit like this. And if you like this pant, it's actually the same pant, but two it's inches chopped, it off. chopped off. Chopped off. So everything's going to fit the same with the exception of a high waist. Yes, this that looks size amazing. I'm wearing. I'm wearing the 27. Yes. And that's something that I really want to talk about because someone did personally request via DM that I try on jeans. So this is the exact same shape as the blue. This is your spring curved denim. But if you look, it's just an inch below my belly button. And what you've noticed is that I've been trending more towards a size two, but in the denim, I'm one of four. And that's just because I don't want it to pull anymore. I like the curve that I've got going on. I like where it's sitting. And with a lower jean, especially in white, I'm always gonna size up in a white jean. I just am. I'm never gonna go for the smaller size. No kidding. No, I'm not doing yes, it. Like, like, like I'm not. Don't like, go. Like, I'm not oh, doing that to myself. Uh, like, <laughs> like Elizabeth Hurley, like, like this, just mm, if if you want, down. if you want to size down in a white jean, just like go home, take a shower, think about it before you do not pull the plug. Especially I think it's like sausage sale. casing. Like yeah, I can't. Like it's just you know, yeah, for my yeah. own sake and for my own health. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So, so when we told you earlier not to listen to broad generalizations, like. But yes, a white jean. Saying, do not size down. Like yeah, don't, every don't. time you think it's a good idea, don't. but that's because you haven't seen it in the like. You haven't seen someone take a photo of you on set from behind, like I have, and I'm like, oh god. I will, <laughs> I will set up a white jean hotline. Yeah. Just to help people, like if you need to call us, if you're in. Europe, if you're in Asia, and it's two in the morning, but you need to be walked off of the uh, tight white jean yeah. uh, ledge, we will help Just you. get a tripod, take a picture, don't even look at it, just fire it off, and just be like, what do you think? And if the answer, if it's a size down, it's always probably gonna be down. I mean, no. Just say. All right, guys, so I hope that this was helpful. I'm really, this is the first stage of finding clarity, um, but you know, it gave me some good ideas, and we will like dive deeper in that, but, um, you guys have a good day, night, morning, whatever time it is, wherever you are, and um, later. What? What? They're just, oh. trying, to, they're just trying to come on set. Yeah, you know.
I'm sorry. We have these weird people over here. Oh, is it not still on? Oh, bye. Bye.